guys, what's going on? Welcome to a brand new episode of United in Strength. Mike here. And before I begin, I want to say I hope you are safe right now. I hope your family is safe. And um, we'll get through this, guys. We will get through this. Um, before I begin this, uh, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. And make sure that if you like this video, please give it that thumbs up and spread the word. So, social distancing, as of a few days ago, is officially underway until April 30th. It has been extended, yeah. And it's certain to put a damper on a lot of things for many of you who might be reading this right now. Whatever plans you may have had in advance that might involve social gatherings, especially those of more than 10 people... Um, most likely that's postponed now, um, were you furloughed from your job due to lost revenue? Is your business considered not essential? Do you rely on daily social interaction to feel personally satisfied? The loss of any of those could lead to a number of emotions, especially anxiety for your future. If you're working from home like I am, then those fears probably won't pertain to you. Right now, I feel very fortunate to be working in the type of job I work in. I will say that, however. Um, but staying home for too long can make you feel too comfortable, creating quite a bit of a lazy demean demeanor, the likes of which you probably never even knew you had inside of you. There's no other way to put it. As nerve-wracking as this pandemic is, and has become... It's also provided for many of us, as crazy it may sound, and myself included here, a very unique opportunity for you to accomplish all the things that you say you never had the time to do, have the time to do, or so you say. So I'll be using this article to discuss six ways in which you can counteract those emotions during this difficult time, making you as productive as home as you are in the office or wherever it is that you may work. Number one is set up a routine. And I know you must have heard this a million times, but it really rings true more than ever now. The sudden change in your life might prompt you to sleep in, sit on the couch, go to bed late, and um, I think twice about doing that. If you are an anxious person, not having a plan of attack for the day might lead you to get lost in your thoughts, and this is not the time to do that. Nor is any time, but this is definitely not the time for you to do that. It's not healthy for you. I might or might not have experience in that. Make a list, either mental or writ write it down, of all the things of things to do every day, including a time to wake up. And I don't mean the crack of noon either. As well as the things you might want to accomplish but would never get the chance to under normal circumstances. Like I said, this is a very unique unique time. Also, unless you're in education like I am, you'll eventually have to go back to work. And depending on how soon that is, you'll want to be physically and emotionally ready. More on that later. I wake up every day at 6 a.m. I stretch. I exercise briefly. And I take a brisk walk around the block. And I even make a smoothie before starting my work day at 830. Voila! Number two. Exercise daily. Now, if you read my articles, this one's a no-brainer. But for some of you who might be stumbling upon this article, this might open up a whole new world for you, and I hope it does. Are you that person who claims that you won't go to the gym because you don't have time? What's your excuse now? Because here's your chance. I'm not saying you have to do much of anything. I'm not saying you have to do the things I advocate on this website or on this YouTube page. You could take a brisk 10 minute walk around your neighborhood first thing in the morning and in the increase in your heart rate, all right, will increase the blood circulation throughout your body and it will give you increased energy throughout the day. It has done wonders for me, especially since I've been doing it a lot more since I've been home. Number three, focus on stretching and mobility. Are you working from home? Unless your posture is fantastic and you understand your anatomy, a few things will happen. You will have hip flexor pain, especially if you're sitting in front of a computer all day. When you sit down, your hip flexors, also known as your psoas major, are in the flex position. So sitting for a long period of time also weakens 
your gluteus maximus, your glutes, your butt muscles, and that will cause lower back pain. And if you're in a situation where you're sitting for several hours at a time, this will cause tightness in those areas as well as potentially pain. This obviously is a detriment to many of us in terms of physical activity. Also, most people tend to hunch over when they're sitting in front of a computer all day. This means your shoulders will most likely roll forward, tightening your chest and weakening your upper back. And nothing says pain like overactive pectoral region and underactive upper back. I might or might know this from experience again. That's why it's so important that you take at least 10 minutes every so often during the day to perform routines such as the DeFranco Agile 8, which works to loosen your lumbo pelvic hip complex. You should also foam roll your upper back and especially your pectoral region, as well as using resistance bands if you have them available to you to strengthen your posterior deltoids in order to prevent shoulder pain and bad posture from uh, muscular imbalances. Number four, eat better. Yes, you. Many of you probably choose not to cook for the same reason you say you choose not to go to the gym. Well, once again, you now have plenty of time. I understand that grocery shopping right now is pretty nightmarish, honestly. But if you have 100 bucks in a supermarket with decent stock shelves, you might be able to find some stuff like some skinless chicken breasts, some frozen or fresh veggies, and a slow digesting carb like brown rice, because right now is not the time to have white rice or any kind of fast digesting carbs. Um, you could do those things and you will have some easy to cook meals, very little prep time, almost just as long of cooking time. Brown rice does take longer than white rice to cook, but start there and you might be, and if, and you might from there find some more complex recipes, but grilled chicken and mixed veggies or sauteed veggies like I like to do is so easy to do done in 10 minutes. You will be tempted to buy TGI Fridays, potato skins, a Tatino's, pizza rolls, blah, blah, blah. But remember, if you're overweight, this is the best time to experiment with changing your diet and training yourself mentally to stick to it. It's all psychology, kids. Oh, and don't forget to stick with only water. No soda, no iced tea, water, and room temperature water at that. Number five is virtual interaction. As I mentioned earlier, some of you are feeling the emotional pain of isolation from the rest of society. And while I personally am not the biggest fan of social media, as it personally sometimes makes you feel lonely, the idea of talking to people I'll never meet because they live far away across the country no matter how cool they are. Um, there are multiple platforms right now where your friends are getting together as we speak, as I record this, and they are doing, they're holding interactive chats, movie nights, dinners where people are ordering takeout and talking with each other online in an attempt, in a creative attempt to emulate those nights where you normally have friends over your house and scarf down a pie from the pizzeria down the street. You could use apps like Skype or Zoom, which I'm only learning about now because of my actual job. And you could use those to keep in touch with your loved with your loved ones, especially and your friends. Right now, they might need you. Are you as big a fan of music as I am? Bands are even using these platforms to hold concerts. I kid you not. Number six to end this list is sleep. This could have easily been used in my uh, setup or routine step. But I chose to make this a separate piece for one reason. I know you probably are either sleeping in late anyway, or not sleeping enough. And that's why I wanted to reiterate this point to rein it all in and bring it home. If you're going to work on your physical and emotional well-being, sleep rules everything around you. Can anyone figure out what I did there? Eh? Eh? Getting seven or eight hours of sleep each night will help to relieve <clears throat> stress, anxiety, inflammation, it will improve your memory, and it will even help you lose weight. And when you do go to bed, do you play on your phone, 
texting your buddies before you go to sleep, that's going to stop right here. The harsh light from your cell phone, regardless of how dim you say it is, is going to mess up your circadian rhythm, tricking your mind to stay awake, regardless of how tired your body is, and that's not healthy. So instead, do whatever it takes for you personally to get nice and comfortable under the sheets for any, for an easy rest. I, for example, will take half of a melatonin with my last meal, followed by taking a nice cold shower every night as the body pretty much requires a cooler temperature in order to relax and get comfortable, which is the opposite of what most people realize. Although that's a story for another article. All right, so that's my little spiel. Um, six ways to help you get through this isolation period. Hopefully these will work for you. Hopefully these will help you. If you agree or disagree with any of these, please comment down below. Let's make this an open forum, guys. Let's talk about this. And if you need an, an ear to someone to talk to, you could drop me a line also. I'm willing to talk. I am also offering free Skype consultation and free Skype virtual at-home training. Drop me a line if you want to know more about that. Also remember to subscribe and give this a thumbs up if you like this video. And why would you not? I hope to talk to you guys again real soon.